Starlink is full in Jamaica. Will it expand or lock Jamaicans out? Something unusual is happening in Jamaica's digital space. Across the island, Jamaicans are trying to buy Starlink. They enter their address. They reach the payment screen. And then they're blocked. No service available. Capacity reached. Sold out. This isn't a rumor. This isn't social media hype. This message is coming directly from Starlink itself. The same service that promised internet without limits is now telling Jamaicans we're full. So, how did Jamaica hit Starlink's limit so fast? And more importantly, what happens next? Is Starlink really full in Jamaica? Let's clear the confusion. Right now, Starlink residential service in many parts of Jamaica is unavailable due to capacity limits. New users are being rejected or forced onto more expensive roaming plans, while existing users report slower speeds during peak hours. This combination usually signals one thing, local congestion. Starlink hasn't shut down, but it has quietly hit a ceiling in Jamaica. And when a satellite internet system hits capacity, it doesn't fail loudly. It simply stops accepting new people. What Starlink says, and what it avoids saying. Starlink is very open about one thing, global success. They proudly announce millions of users worldwide, rapid growth, hundreds of satellite launches. But when it comes to country-level data, everything goes silent. No public figure for how many users are in Jamaica. No explanation of Jamaica's capacity limit. No timeline for expansion. So Jamaicans are left guessing, while staring at a sold-out message on their screen. That lack of transparency matters because Starlink in Jamaica is no longer just a convenience. It has become essential infrastructure. Why Jamaica hit capacity so fast? Jamaica didn't slowly creep towards Starlink's limit. It rushed there. After hurricanes damaged fiber lines, cell towers, and electricity infrastructure, Starlink became the fastest way back online. Government agencies, emergency responders, schools, churches, rural communities, and private citizens all turned to satellite internet at once. At the same time, Jamaica already had pent-up demand. Rural broadband gaps, unreliable fixed lines, frequent outages. Once people saw Starlink working during blackouts, word spread fast. And here's the key point. Starlink has local capacity limits. Each coverage cell can only handle so much traffic. Jamaica didn't break Starlink. Jamaica overwhelmed it. The hidden multiplier effect. Here's something most people overlook. One Starlink dish in Jamaica rarely serves just one person. It often supports entire households, community centers, shelters, schools, or neighborhood hubs. That means one terminal can connect dozens, sometimes hundreds, of people indirectly. So when Starlink says capacity reached, it doesn't mean a few tech enthusiasts signed up. It means tens of thousands of Jamaicans may already depend on it, especially during emergencies. That quietly turns Starlink into a national dependency. The control question. Now we reach the uncomfortable part. Starlink is not Jamaican-owned. It is not regionally controlled. And it is not subject to local infrastructure switches. Starlink decides who gets access, when capacity opens, which plans are allowed, how much it costs. Jamaica cannot force expansion. It can only request it. This doesn't mean Starlink is hostile, but it does mean Jamaica has limited leverage over a system it increasingly relies on. Will Starlink expand in Jamaica? So, let's ask the big question. Will Starlink expand, or will Jamaica remain locked out? Globally, Starlink is expanding fast. New satellites are constantly being launched. Capacity is increasing in many regions. In theory, Jamaica should see relief. But expansion is not automatic. Starlink prioritizes areas based on demand, profitability, and strategic importance. Jamaica is small. It doesn't generate the same revenue as large markets and satellite capacity is shared across regions. So expansion may come, but not on Jamaica's timeline. The risk of being locked out. If Starlink doesn't expand quickly, Jamaica faces a real risk. New users will be forced onto expensive roaming plans. Speeds may continue to degrade. Emergency reliance could strain the system further during the next disaster. And over time, Starlink could quietly become exclusive, available only to those who can afford higher tier access that would turn what was once seen as a digital equalizer into another digital divide. What Jamaica should be asking right now. This is where the conversation must shift. Should Jamaica negotiate guaranteed emergency capacity, develop regional satellite partnerships, invest in backup national connectivity systems, 
Treat satellite internet as strategic infrastructure because relying entirely on goodwill and global expansion plans is not a strategy. What this means for everyday Jamaicans. For ordinary Jamaicans, the message is clear. Starlink is no longer unlimited. It's no longer cheap. And it's no longer guaranteed. Availability will depend on where you live. Prices may rise. Performance may fluctuate. And new users may be shut out entirely, even if they can afford it. Starlink has shifted from being an alternative to being a scarce resource. Starlink being full in Jamaica isn't just a technical issue. It's a warning. A warning that demand has outpaced planning. A warning that Jamaica's digital resilience is fragile. And a warning that control over critical systems now lies far beyond our borders. The real question isn't whether Starlink will expand. The real question is, will Jamaica prepare or wait until the signal goes dark?